A Song of Ice and Fire has the craziest fan theorists known to man. If you randomly generated a theory, there's a chance that it's more plausible than something someone actually believes. So that raises the question, would you even be able to tell the difference between a real genuine free range theory and one that I literally just made up? Well, for this April Fools, we put together a quiz to test exactly that, and I roped in four fellow content creators to see if they can sniff out the fake theories. So let's meet our contestants. First up, from the Game of Thrones podcast YouTube channel, we have Carmine. Self-described as not really a theories guy, Carmine is sure to achieve roughly the statistical average. Hailing from Romania, we have Valdia, the guy behind an anime of ice and fire, and also the same thing but Warcraft. He's a wonderful artist, and I feel really bad for putting him through this dumb quiz, so please do check his work out. Next up is Preston Jacobs, a very tall man who once met George R.R. R. Martin and used the opportunity to ask him about a book he hadn't read in decades. And our last contestant needs no introduction. But he, but he's getting one anyway. My name's Alt X. I like uh, uh, badminton and uh, cro crochet. And um, I like to talk about dragons on the internet. And of course, you can play along in the comments below. Here's how the quiz works. We've got 12 questions, each with four possible answers. In some questions, only one of the theories will be fake, and in others, only one of them will be real. Your job is to spot the outlier. Just to be clear, a real theory is one that I can find a source for on the westeros.org forums, any of the subreddits, Quora, YouTube, or the fan submissions for my own theory streams. So this includes theories that you would consider to be jokes, memes, and shitposts. So something like the time travel Tyrion fetus is considered real here. A fake theory is one I made up just to screw with you. I tried my darndest to ensure that these are not real theories, but I'll admit there's a slim chance some wacko has posted it somewhere I couldn't find. For an extra kicker, one of the 12 questions is a trick question, meaning either all of the answers are correct or none of them are. So bonus point for calling that one out. All right, let's go. Welcome everyone to a, a game show of thrones was taken so um welcome to a quiz of game show a, a song of game and show whatever question one we'll start off with an easy one which one of these theories is fake a the weirwood paste bran 8 was jojen b Varys shaves his head to hide his valyrian features as he is secretly a scion of house blackfire c maester crescent is still alive d Roos Bolton is an ancient skin-changing vampire. Put your answer in the comments, and now let's hear the contestants' thoughts on our first question. I, I'm sure someone thinks Crescent is still alive, um, and that he, like, is Dario, but uh, <laughs> I think that that's the one you've made up. All of the others are pretty legit theories. Uh, Maester Crescent is still alive. That one is definitely fake because, and I, I know this because I know the other three, and they're fairly popular. Well, I've never heard Maester Crescent is still alive um, as a theory, and I've heard the other three, so I'm going with I'm going with with C. So you're starting me with an easy one, yes. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my my pick of the fake one is Maester Crescent is still alive. This one is definitely fake. That's right. No one thinks that. Um, pe yeah. People aren't that crazy yet. <laughs> We're getting there, though. On to question two, the parentage theories round. Hopefully this one isn't quite so easy. Which one of these theories is fake? A. Rob's parents are Brandon and Catelyn. B. Daenerys' parents are Ashara and Eris. C. Aegon and Rhaenys' parents are Oberyn and Elia. D. Sweet Robin's parents are Lysa and the Blackfish. Again, plop your answer down below. You can pause now to think about it. All right, let's hear what the lads had to say. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Doesn't it hurt that only one of those is fake? <laughs> I... I, it's so painful. Ooh, um, oh, that's a toughie. Wow. Now, I've definitely heard <coughs> Rob's parents are, are Brandon and Catalan. I've definitely heard that one before. And I've definitely heard Daenerys' parents being Ashara and Ares. Daenerys' parents are Ashara and Ares. Uh, sure. Actually, no, that doesn't work with the timeline at all. Because Ares was in King's Landing. Ashara... That doesn't make any fucking sense. The last one I heard, is their Sweet Robin's parents are actually Lysa and Littlefinger's child. That one I've heard. Now, obviously, the, there's a very common theory that Sweet Robin's parents are Lysa and Littlefinger, but I have not yet heard that Sweet Robin's parents are Lysa and the Blackfish, though that's 
That's pretty interesting. And then Aegon and Rhaenys are Oberyn and Elia's children. Some people look at this story and think there's not enough incest. Aegon and Rhaenys are Oberyn and Elia's children. That's a fucking new one. Ah, uh, sweet Robin's parents are Lysa and the Blackfish. Her uncle? Why? He's gay. Why? <laughs> I hate all of them so much. <laughs> I'm so angry at every individual <laughs> person who came up with all of these theories, including you, Gladys. So one of these is fake, but there is a chance that this question would be a trick one where all of them are either fake or real. That is true. I'm going with this one being a trick question and all of these are fake. Oh, that's so interesting because it's not the trick question. <laughs> oh my. Three of these are real. <laughs> For fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Daenerys's parents are Shara and Eris. I think that's the fake one. Um, that's a real one. <gasps> no, yeah. how yeah, someone... does the person even come up with that? How? I want to say D. I've, I, I, I just think D because there's so many theories that Blackfish is gay as well, um, and that kind of everybody is assuming that Lysa would be only be sleeping with with Littlefinger. I'm gonna say D is the fake one. I think you made up the blackfish thing because that's just answering a question that no one has ever asked, you know? I'm going to lock in the Sweet Robin one. Yeah, that's it. You, you got it. I'm I'm furious that your brain came up with, <laughs> with that theory. I just, I, I was trying to, like, zone in to the, the parentage theorist mind. Yeah. No, you, you've come up with, with a fresh new horror that's going to haunt me ever more. You're welcome. Happy April Fool's. <laughs> <laughs> April Fools, I've, oh, I've poisoned your mind forever. <laughs> we all have been fooled. <laughs> gotcha. We are all fools now. Question three is the objects round. This one's the other kind of question. Now I want you to guess which one of these is a real theory. The others are all made up. A. Blackfire is in Storm's End. B. The Horn of Winter is a yet undiscovered dragon horn. C. Bonifer Hasty of the Holy Hundred has Dark Sister. D. Kyburn gave Gregor's head to the House of Black and White. Remember, one of these is real. Answer below, let's give a listen. I can't imagine why Blackfire would be at Storm's End and why a fan would, would think it would be at Storm's End. Blackfire is in Storm's End. I don't know what Blackfire would be doing at Storm's End. I don't know why anyone would think that. Kyburn giving Gregor's head to the House of Black and White. Uh, I can't see that one being very uh, useful to them. Well, I, I just immediately love the theory that Kyburn gave Gregor's head to the House of Black and White. Because Gregor's head is an object of some mystery. Exactly. Um, because, you know, the Lannisters gave the skull to the Dornish and the faceless men use faces. So I just like that one. I've heard of this theory that the horn that the Night's Watch found it's actually just a normal horn, nothing special about it. A yet undiscovered dragon horn. I also kind of love it because the Horn of Winter, its its purpose and its function is mysterious. Its origins are mysterious. So maybe it summons an ice dragon or something. And that, you know, maybe the wall is an ice dragon and blowing the horn summons that breaks the wall. It, ooh, that could all work. Uh, everybody likes to believe that the Horn of Winter has already been discovered with, with either Sam or, or Mance or that it's the the one down in, with, um, with Victarion. So I'm going to think that's uh, fake as well. Bonifer Hasty having Dark Sister, that's interesting in that, in that he was, uh, you know, in love with a Targaryen. Bonifer Hasty has Dark Sister is just aggressively weird and <laughs> I don't like it. No, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 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 going to say that you made up the Bonifer Hasty one cuz the others all have some tenuous connection with reality. I'm going to go with Bon Bonifer Hasty has dark sister. That's fantastic. I'm so glad you chose that one. <laughs> okay. We made that is up. Is it right? <laughs> you made that up, damn it. The real one is I, I like all of them. You made up good ones. I know. I I really tried for this video. <laughs> I think that the real one is Gregor's head. That's incredible. Is that right? No, no, that's fake. I made that up. <laughs> God damn it. I'm going to go with B, but I'm not sure at all about this. Horn of Winter is a yet undiscovered dragon horn because that one I've heard 
being a theory that once it's bl- uh, once it you know they blow it on the horn that the wall will come down because dragons are hidden in it. That has to be the real one. Yeah, you're right. Yay! Haha. <laughs> That's the real one. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah, boy. The three horns that we already got. Yeah, they're not, not enough. good enough. We need more. <sighs> okay. Need more horns. Um, question four doesn't have a theme. So, um, which one of these is real? A. Rohan Weber is secretly Kala Blackfire, Damon Blackfire's daughter. B. A shy was built by the Squishers. C. Cersei actually did kill John Arryn. D. Timmet, son of Timmet, is a bastard by Robert during his time in the Vale. Respond as you see fit before proceeding. Wow. They do have a lot in common, now that you think about it. Timmet and Robert. Yeah, you know. They're, they're both a man's man, you know. Big boys. With a tendency towards unnecessary shows of masculinity. Timmet, son of Timmet, is... I, I don't think that's a theory, because there is already a pretty good theory that he's the true heir to the Vale. Um, Cersei actually did kill John Aaron as a real thinker. <laughs> Because I'm pretty sure Cersei does not think that she killed John Aaron, so she that was a masterful. But if anyone's going to outwit themselves, it's Cersei Lannister. I'm so. pretty sure I didn't kill him. So there's no way anybody could actually believe that Cersei killed John Aaron. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Cersei actually did kill John Aaron. Timid son of Timid is a bastard of Robert in his time in the Vale. I mean, as funny as that would be, <laughs> I don't. Nah, I just can't see that one. Um, Rowan Weber is Damon Blackfire's daughter that one has a possibility okay well it can't be a shy was built by the squishers i don't think anybody is that insane a shy was built by the squishers that's like just very legit rohan weber is callow blackfire i mean like why <laughs> when wherefore whence whomst well i i think it's real that a shy was built by the squishers is like a legit theory like that just is something that like, like, that's adjacent to a lot of real theories. So I'm going to say the Squishes one is real and the other ones you made up. Uh, the one that, w- that I would say I would call bullshit on is the Ashai was built by the Squishers. You told me that was real. I want to meet that person. I'm going to go with Ashai was built by the Squishers. I think that's something that would come out of a, a out of a fan. It does sound real, doesn't it? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to go with the first one. Really? Okay, congratulations. That one's real. Oh, oh my. Yeah, the... That, luck, that's incredible. Luck is on my side. I really today. thought no one would ever go for that one because it's so insane. But the real <laughs> one is actually uh, the the Kala Blackfire one. Oh, I know. And it's like Rohan Weber has red hair and a pretty detailed family tree of where she comes from. Yeah. Question five: The secret identity round. Which one of these theories is fake? Make sure to give your own answer before hearing the responses. A. Robert Strong is just a new guy. B. Edric Storm will become a faceless man. C. Rhaegar is ghost. D. Benjen is manse. I mean, that's just common sense. I mean, they're both Night's Watch. Uh, uh-huh. And it explains why manse <laughs> likes John so much. So we can rule that one out. Yeah, no, that one's completely accurate. You're fucking merciless. <laughs> uh, all these four are fucking bonkers <laughs> but- <laughs> see this one's a little difficult because robert strong just a new guy i can see that being a thing right but at the same time knowing you guys the most the most sane one is probably the most fake because that sounds very that sounds very like yeah you could be just a new guy that just came in robert strong is a new guy i think i've heard because it's just like it would actually be just kind of funny that that it's so it's so obvious that it's that it's <laughs> yeah. doesn't Nymeria say that because Gregor is eight feet tall, like if anyone shows up who's that tall, it's definitely him. Well, no, it's just right. a new dude. <laughs> no. Robert St- Strong being just a new guy <laughs> uh, <laughs> of no significance with no history. You know, you know, like when at the start of a book it says like any similarity to existing humans is coincidental. <laughs> I'm sure someone has made that joke before. Edric Storm will become a faceless man that is i don't see how that is a thing rhaegar is ghost i still that benjen is mans okay that one i've that one i know is kind of a real theory because i've heard it before because mans has been to winterfell and you know i could see someone claiming that benjen is mans 
As as ridiculous as that is, I, I could definitely... Yeah, you've heard crazier things. I mean, it explains the Winterfell wedding a lot better. I'm, I'm going to say that that's real. Rhaegar is ghost. I mean, like, it kind of makes sense that, that the Targaryens have skin-changing powers because, like, they have a mystical connection with the dragons that they control. I'm going to go with the third one being fake with Rhaegar being ghost. All right, I'm, I'm going to say the fake one is Rhaegar is ghost. That one's real. Oh, <laughs> no, no. I What? Guys, guys, I know George is taking his time, but for fuck's sake. A- Edric Storm becoming a faceless man. I cannot imagine what theory would need to make up that idea. Like, I don't know why. Robert Strong is a new guy. That's real. Wow. Okay. I'm, I'm glad. But what's the fake? Edric Storm being a faceless man, too obscure. I think you made that up. You got it. I can't believe that you actually did really quickly write off Benj and his man says real. Oh, it just it it just makes too much sense, man. Like what how can I <laughs> It's fucking bullshit. How can I even begin to question that? <laughs> oh boy, we've hit the Euron round. Anything goes with this guy. Good luck guessing which one of these theories is fake. A Garion Lannister is one of Euron's mutes on board his ship, The Silence. B. The Euron we know is actually a faceless man being paid by Euron to act like Euron. C. Daenerys' dreams are from Euron, not Quaith. D. Euron has grayscale. Don't forget to put your own answer in. I love all of these unironically. I would like to say that all of these are <laughs> fake. I can see Jyrion Lannister as a theory being one of his mutes because, you know, smoking sea, all that stuff, and he disappeared, so. Now, I've heard a lot of theories that Euron and Jyrion Lannister are, the, are, are one and the same. Um, I've not heard really? yet that he's a mute. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I know. Oh my god. I would love it if... Tyrion made the discovery that one of Euron's mutes was Garion. That would be really metal because Tyrion has wondered what happened to his favorite uncle Garion, and it would be so horrifying if he found him tongueless. And I, I do, I am partial to the idea that Euron might cut out Tyrion's tongue or threaten to cut out Tyrion's tongue. So that that, that works for me. It would, that would be pretty neat if Garion Lannister were on board Euron's ship, The Silence. Um, just on the the amount of fun. I'm going to think that that's a real one. I'm going to go with the first one about Garion Lannister. It's real. Oh. The Euron we know is actually a faceless man being paid by Euron to act like Euron. <laughs> Sounds like exactly what Euron would do. Like his like unique brand of hairbrained narcissism. <laughs> like I think that Euron would look at any problem and you go, you know what the solution to this is? More Eurons. <laughs> the world needs more Eurons, and I will pay any amount of money to to make more, you know? Uh, the Euron we know is actually a faceless man being paid by the real Euron to act like Euron. That is hilarious. <laughs> that that so is good. funny. I could see that one because to reconcile the show, which has Euron pushing Balon over the bridge. So I'm going to say that one's real. Daenerys' dreams are from Euron. I mean, Daenerys has that dream about that ice, ice cold phallus. The dude um, with the ice in a dance stick, with yeah. dragons. He's probably got a glass candle. Uh, Euron, he he's a mystical guy. He he has shade of the evening. He's in with the dreams. He gets dreams from the three eyed crow. Danny's dreams are from Euron, not Quaith. That's that's a pretty cool idea too. Euron has grayscale. Euron having grayscale. I can see someone making that argument why why the fuck would euron have grayscale grayscale makes people crazy euron is a crazy motherfucker i i I think that's probably the one you made up though with the grayscale because i haven't heard anything like that um and also because no offense i don't think it stands up to any scrutiny because like he would have infected everyone on his ship you know but but i mean the problem is like the, the ones that you make up might actually make much more sense than the ones the fandom has made up so like Bonifer Hasty having dark sister yeah indisputable I think the one that's most boring that doesn't really add anything is Euron is, has grayscale so I'm gonna think that that's the fake one no I'm gonna lock in the grayscale one I think you made that one up well I won't take offense to it because it's not mine Oh, <laughs> which one did you make up? The fake one has to be Daenerys' dreams are for Euron, not Quaid. He's got it. Yeah? All right. That doesn't make any sense. I couldn't find anyone who said directly that Daenerys' dreams are from Euron. Really? Yeah. 
I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess that is a broad claim because then you're suggesting that like Quaith is actually Euron in drag the whole time. Um, you know, I reckon someone has thought that. I mean, it now that I say it out loud, it just it's it seems obvious. You know, that's a really good theory though that that, that actually Quaith is Euron the entire time because she was yeah he was in Karth we know that yeah and he disappears like he follows Danny at the same around the same time like timeline wise Quaith being Euron that, yeah that's not too crazy <laughs> we've hit the halfway point now so this is your contractually obliged by Quizly reminder that one of these is a trick question and it has not shown up yet question seven is the purple wedding round which one of these theories is fake a Elena was trying to kill Tyrion. B. Varys was trying to kill Sansa. C. Tywin was trying to kill Joffrey. D. Oberyn was trying to kill Marjorie. As always, leave your answer below. Okay, I know for certain that this is not a trick question, because the first one is definitely real. Elena trying to kill Tyrion, I've heard. Tywin was trying to kill Joffrey, I've heard. Like, th like those are not too deranged. Tywin was trying to kill Joffrey... I could see people saying that for some reason. So I think that's going to be real. I've always thought that Tywin was sick of Joffrey's shit. Okay, Tywin trying to kill Joffrey. Okay, I can see that being a, a theory that someone would come up with. Uh, same with Oberyn trying to kill Marjorie. I can see that as well, in a sense, um, trying to sow doubt. Oberyn was trying to kill Marjorie. That's that's a real head scratcher. It sounds like it came out of a random word generator. Marjorie dying would create tension between the Lannisters and Tyrells. But like Oberyn is tight with Willis Tyrell. I mean, I guess Oberyn's just trying to weaken the Lannisters' alliance with Tyrells. Elena trying to kill Tyrion. What's what's that one? That would make sense uh, because Tyrion was marrying Sansa to try to get Winterfell. They wanted Willis to marry Sansa. That one makes too much sense. That one's got to be real. I mean, the, the Varys one trying to kill Sansa is so silly because it's like Varys could so easily kill Sansa with any of his little birds any day of the week. Varys was trying to kill Sansa. I don't know why Varys would want to kill Sansa <laughs> <laughs> and do so in such a weird way. Why Sansa? Why, why would that? I'm going to go with Varys trying to kill Sansa. That is fake. I'm, I'm probably overthinking the believability of the theories, and I should be thinking which one of these is more likely to have come from your deranged mind. I've really got to be psychoanalyzing the Glidus here. For that reason, I'm going to choose... Varys was trying to kill Sansa. I'm going to say Varys was trying to kill Sansa is the fake one. I'm going to go with the fake one being the second with Varys trying to kill Sansa. You are correct. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, I got it. Are you going to have like a, a audience sound effect pl applause? Um, no, I'll just use your cheering actually. Yeah. Question eight is another secret identities round, but this time only one of them is real. A, Barbary Dustin had a bastard with Brandon Stark and that bastard is the hooded man. B, Brienne was right. Willow is Arya in disguise. C, Robert Glover is Howland Reed. D, Renifer Longwaters is the High Sparrow. <laughs> Longwaters being the High Sparrow? That one is a weird one. Uh, who the fuck is Renifer Longwaters? You didn't forget Renifer Longwaters. Uh, I... He's mm. the chief underguller of the dungeons beneath the Red Keep. Oh, he, he's the guy who Jamie chats with, isn't he? The long-winded one. Yeah. He's the High Sparrow, is he? What? No, that's... Okay, all right. I mean, that, I think, will be part of a broader theory of the High Sparrow's plans. And I think that the theory maker in question needed an excuse for the High Sparrow to have access to the jails. What? No. That one That one is random. So they were like, Renifer Longwaters. He's a jailer who we know nothing about. He's the High Sparrow. I, feel, I, I think that one could be real. The theory behind that is just the guy is just, he goes from working in the dungeons of the Red Keep to the High Sparrow. That doesn't make any sense. I remember hearing something about Barbary Dustin and Brandon Stark, but I don't know if it was regarding the hooded man. Barbary Dustin had a bastard with Brandon Stark, plausible, and he is the hooded man. Mm, plausible. I mean, 
we don't we know nothing about this hypothetical bastard nor do we know anything about this hooded man zero equals zero it's possible uh barbary dustin had mm, i feel like i've heard that one before robert glover is Helen reed oh uh, no <laughs> no <laughs> like i mean I guess the Northern Lords don't see a lot of the reeds. I feel like the Glover family might notice <laughs> if their dad <laughs> was a chronic man. <laughs> uh, don't like that one. I mean, considering how many blank blank are, is Howland Reed. Nah, but the, oh gosh, have I? I've never heard anyone claim how like Robert Glover is Howland Reed. As much as the hooded man is everybody. Robert Glover being the Howland Reed, that makes no sense. As for Willow and Arlo, no, that that has to be fake as well. Uh, Brienne was right. Willow is Ira in disguise. Uh, again, it's confident. <laughs> I enjoy it. Uh, I uh, hate it. The Renner for Longwaters one is really tickling my giblets. I mean, that would be such a weird thing for you to make up. I, f I feel like if you made that, that up, you were like, okay, who's the most obscure character I can think of? And I'll say he's the High Sparrow. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Barbary Dustin had a bastard, but Brandon Stark, and he is the hooded man. All right, I, I'm, I'm going to say the, the Barbary Brandon one is a real theory, but I feel like Renef is going to bite me in the ass. I think this is the one, your trick question. I think all of these are fake. I would say that these all are fake. One of these is real. Damn it. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. Brienne was right. Willow was already in disguise. Oh, I, and... I wish that was real. I'm so proud of myself <laughs> for coming up with that. That's I think that's, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> no, it's probably Barbary Dustin. It is. It is that one. Yeah. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> I am catching on somewhat to what you guys are, are, are putting down here. I, I almost got you with Renner for Long Waters. This is this has given me some theory inspiration. I, I think we need to write some of these theories. Ah, uh, question nine. Um, this is the horse. The horse question. The horse question. Wait, is, is there a horse round? Are these all horse based questions? Yeah, this questions? is the horse round. Oh no. Which one of these theories is fake? A. Carl Drogo is a horse. B. Lyanna Stark is a horse. C. Sandor Clegane is a horse. Or D. Tyrek Lannister is a horse. <laughs> Please tell me this is the joke round. Lyanna Stark being a horse, I don't know. Maybe someone actually thought about this because, I mean, her being a great rider and shit. Lyanna Stark is famously good at horse riding. And therefore, it makes... She, so, no, I can't do it. I can't argue for any one of these. Tyrek Lana... No, I can't do it. <laughs> I, I think that this is... I, I mean... No, no one, no one has, you're saying that three of these are real theories. <laughs> no, it's so obviously the fake one that it can't be the trick <laughs> round, but it, it has to be the trick round. I think I've definitely heard that Cal Drogo and Lyanna Stark have like warged horses and are like inside horses at some point. All right, all right, well, okay. I mean, Cal Drogo, like he had a weird resurrection where he became a zombie. His soul went somewhere you could argue that Khal Drogo's soul he skin changed into the silver horse that Daenerys wears you could argue that I don't know I could say let's go with Sandor Clegane being a horse because I really don't see the way that would work Sandor Clegane is a horse I mean Sandor's horse the stranger has a lot of personality well here's what happened Gliders here's the thing here's what you've missed Sandor skin changed into stranger Stranger skin changed into the dog at the Quiet Isle that, ah. that Sandor scratches, and the dog skin changed into Sandor. Cute. The three way soul swap. People have said, like, specifically, Lyanna Stark is like half a horse and all of this. Lyanna was a Stark. Starks have skin change of blood. She could have skin changed into a horse. I don't know which specific <laughs> horse. A lot of people think that Lyanna was the Knight of the Laughing Tree. Yeah, true. I, yeah, and and Lyanna walked into her horse in order to win the Knight of the Laughing Tree joust. I don't know why Tyrek Lannister would ever be a horse. The only one, the only one that is not reasonable to me is that Tyrek Lannister <laughs> Tyrek is a horse. <laughs> I, I, because he's such an obscure character, <laughs> and the only thing that makes Tyrek Lannister worth anything 
is that he's in Tyrek Lannister's body <laughs> and can inherit Castle Rock. And I struggle to imagine a horse <laughs> inheriting Castle Rock. So maybe my imagination is too limited, but I'm saying that the Tyrek one is a fake. <sighs> I, I think Tyrek Lannister as a horse has to be fake. Why would anybody be claiming he's a horse? You may have noticed we haven't heard from Carmine yet. I'm just going to play his response from the moment I finished reading the question to him. Tyrek Lannister is a horse. They're all fake. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Totally, you're saying this is the trick question? Yes, I'm saying this is the trick question. Okay, here's the thing. They're all real, Carmine. That's... Who? <laughs> who are these people? <laughs> who? How? They're all real. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> oh, shit. And here I thought that I would spot the trick question. <laughs> <laughs> this is the trick question. They're all real. <laughs> 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 They're all real. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What why what what is the Tyrek theory? So there's a line where um it says that Tyrek was last seen a horse. <laughs> 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 and if you'll recall at the start of this I did say that shit posts are real <laughs> yeah, no, I uh, uh, okay all right <laughs> wow I stand corrected Cal Drogo being a horse who who Me. why I, I said that is it possible that all of these characters are the same horse <laughs> Question 10. You're probably familiar with the popular theory that Lem Lemoncloak is in fact Rhaegar Targaryen squire Richard Lonmouth. These theories tend to disagree, but which one of them is fake? A. Lem Lemoncloak is Roderick Greyjoy. B. Lem Lemoncloak is a Darry bastard. Lem is short for Willem. C. Richard Lonmouth is Bronn. D. Richard Lonmouth is the elder brother on the Quiet Isle. Leave your answer below. Richard Lonmouth coming out of nowhere as as like fan favorites. Wow. Okay. Uh, that's uh, that that's an interesting one. This is completely luck based. Richard Lonmouth is such a random character that <laughs> like wow. He, Roderick Greyjoy is a lamb, lamb and cloak. I mean, like sure. <laughs> like, there's no reason why that can't be true. I mean, but he's like, dead. Well, I mean, so it seems. Roderick Greyjoy as Lem Lemoncloak? Uh, why? That's just like that's just like a why. Maybe Roderick Greyjoy broke like the Hound at the Blackwater, and he just got afraid and he ran away and became a broken man. And the Lemoncloak is is Greyjoy gold, and his personality like kind of fits. Like Lem is like kind of a dick, and Roderick sounded like he was kind of a dick to Theon. I'm going to go with. I don't know, the first one being a fake because we're pretty certain that Roderick was killed. <laughs> yeah, you would think that. I'm going to go with the one that's fake is Roderick Greyjoy is Lem Lemoncloak because how the fuck do you even make that make sense? Yeah, because he's dead, right? Sure, yeah. Anyway, I that's mean, real. What? Okay. Oh, come on. I could see someone claiming that Lem Lemoncloak is a dairy bastard. That's such a specific thing to make up, though, Glidus. <laughs> My God. You specify that Lem is short. You include supporting evidence yeah, in your... it's short for Willem. Uh, oh. <laughs> I guess Lem probably is short for Willem, isn't it? I could see someone saying Richard Lonmouth is the elder brother. Richard Lonmouth is the elder brother? I mean, again, why? Like, <laughs> like, it, like that's not that's not even a tertiary character. That is a quaternary character mm. at most. It's it's stupid, but it's something that someone might think. M maybe every monk on the Quiet Isle is secretly someone else. That'd you know? be awesome. Richard Lonmouth is brawn. That one is real. I'm going to lock in the, the Darry Bastard. Lem is Willem one. I, I think that your your enthusiasm for that theory and including the Willem detail shows that you must have made it up. You're giving me so much credit. That that one's real. Wow. I'm going to say Richard Lonmouth is brawn. It's just a very odd what's the point kind of thing. <laughs> That's right. You got it. <sighs> yes. That is really crazy. But at the same time, I guess somebody's like, oh, well, you know, he's got a beard. <laughs> um, <laughs> All these need their own video. Yeah. <laughs> Question 11 on the home stretch now. This one is about spooky fellas. Which one of these theories is real? A. 
Quaith is time traveling Daenerys. B. Howland Reed is the Shrouded Lord. C. Bloodraven is controlling Lady Stoneheart. Or D. Patchface is time traveling Bran. They seem like they could all be real. That means I've done my job right. All these are so, so plausible. <laughs> <laughs> I think that Quaith is time traveling Daenerys, I may have heard before. Like, you know, that's why Quaith is wearing the mask, because it's Daenerys' face. And, like, you know, to go forwards, you must go back. You know, sounds like it could be a time travel thing. I mean, it's obviously garbage, but like it kind of <laughs> appeals to me on some levels. There are so many fucking theories regarding Quaith. Quaith is time traveling Daenerys. I feel like I've heard this one before. I have never heard of the, any of the other ones. Blood Raven is controlling Lady Stoneheart sounds the most reasonable to me. Like Blood Raven is probably controlling cold hands through some like corpsey skin changing, like Lady Stoneheart is his own. Like, pff, sure, like superficially, sure. The least crazy is probably, is probably Blood Raven is controlling Lady Stoneheart. So I think I'm gonna go with that one. It's a really good one, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> no. I'm pretty proud of it. <laughs> I would like to to hear Preston Jacobs' opinion on the fourth one. <laughs> and Patchface is a time traveling brand. Ever since Preston's video, everybody's time traveling brand. There are similarities. There there's some strange behavior with both of those individuals. And like Bran in the show especially becomes this like sort of depersonalized damaged by magic person. Uh, which is what Patchface is. Patchface's brain is scrambled by the sheer um, amount of divine knowledge that's inside his head from the Drowned God. I, I've only heard Howland Reed theories, him being um, the High Sparrow, that one I've heard before, him being the Shrouded Lord. Uh, mm. I mean, for fuck's sake, we have Howland Reed being the High Sparrow. We have Hulgarian Lannister being the Shrouded Lord. Howland Reed is the Shrouded Lord. I mean... Why? <laughs> I just... I... Why? Yeah. The only character who has anything to do with the Shrouded Lord is Tyrion. And Tyrion has nothing to do with Howland Reed. I mean, John Con as well. Y yeah, like... Who, of course, spends a lot of time with, with Howland Reed. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, that, I'm furious about that one. The more I think about it, and I hate that I have to say this sentence out loud... But I'm starting to like the Patchface is time traveling Bran theory. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm going to go with Quaith is time traveling Daenerys. I think the Quaith one is is more real because Quaith is a much more mysterious character than most of the other ones. I feel like you made up Patchface. I feel like you made up the Shrouded Lord. The real one is Quaith is time traveling Daenerys. Lock it in. You got it. Nice. Oh, yeah, boy. Yeah. Alan Reed being someone secretly, I, it's not the Shrouded Lord. I don't think anyone's that crazy. But then again, Lyanna Stark being a horse. You, you were inspired with the Howland Shrouded Lord one. I'm trying to think of two A Song of Ice and Fire characters who, who, have, who have less to do with each <laughs> other than Howland and the Shrouded Lord. Um, Zolo the Fat and Krasnitz. Uh, well, they're both from Essos, so... Oh, fuck. You know. True, they're both from a huge continent. Pate, Pate the Acolyte, and... No, no, Pate is the Harpy. There you go. Well, the Faceless Man took... Don't. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that she's physically there. Quaid <laughs> is a physical body. Yeah, so this is from someone who probably isn't aware of how George handles time travel, typically. If it if Quaith only visited her telepathically, I'd be like, oh yeah, no, totally. No, no, I've got it. Um, the dreams are from time-traveling Daenerys, but when she meets Quaith in Karth, that's Euron. <laughs> <laughs> For our final question, I went all out. This is the insane round. Which one of these theories is real? A. Gerald Dane is the Great Other. B. Leaf is Bloodraven's child with one of the other children of the forest. C. Alice Karstark wrote the pink letter. D. All Walders are the same time-travelling Walder. That's a really great theory. <laughs> the Omni Walder. All Walders are the same time traveling. What's up with the time traveling? The Meta Walder. Oh boy, I like the last one. The Ur Walder. Gerald Dane being the great other, that's bullshit. That has to be bullshit. Oh, for fuck's sake, Gerald <laughs> Dane, for real. 
<laughs> nah. Gerald Dane is the great other. I mean, sure, the dark star is the darkness of the great other. I don't I don't see what's insane about that, Gladys. There's no way there's no way that's real. Leaf is Blood Raven's child with one of the other children. That's that can't be real. Because Blood Raven, he's in he's isn't he embedded in the tree? There's no way he's fucking. Um no way he's fucking. Sure. I mean, why is this creepy old man so invested in this club of pixies? I think he must have, like, he's put down roots. Ah, uh, he's part of a tree. Yeah, I, pff, sure. I, I don't like it, but I could see why someone would think it. Alex Karstark writing the pink letter. We did, a, we, did a, we did a video on the pink letter recently where I'm very boring. I think Ramsey wrote it. Very boring. Um, I'm so disappointed. These days, like, pink letter theorizing uh, comprises... When, when people are theorizing about the Pink Letter, they basically just get a list of characters who are in the North and they throw a dart at that list and then they say that person wrote the Pink Letter. So, like, I can see someone believing the Alice Karstark one. I think Alice Karstark wrote the Pink Letter just because everybody has written the Pink Letter at this point. <laughs> I, can't, I can't think that, like, that, that somebody came up with Alice Karstark wrote the Pink Letter. Alice Karstark being the one that wrote the Pink Letter... I'm stuck between that one and because <laughs> the all Walders one reminds me of the Rick and like Rick from Rick and Morty, like how like the Council of Ricks. So is there a Council of Walders? What's what are we doing here? <laughs> the Walders one, I feel like you made up. The Gerald Dane one, I feel like you made up. I, I'm going to say that Alice Karstark wrote the Pink Letter is a real theory. I can't believe you actually went for that. Oh no, the third one is real because it sounds it sounds familiar the alice karstark one are you going with it yeah i am going with it okay um <laughs> no i made that up i couldn't find anyone who said that damn it oh fuck gerald dane being the great oh that's dumb i'm gonna go with this is if this is the last insane one it has to be the most insane one it's the council of walders all walders <laughs> are the same time traveling walder that has that has to be the real one i'm so glad you picked that <laughs> Is it? Is, did I get it? That's no. a real one? No? Oh. It's the Gerald Dane one. Huh? Where? How? Who? Uh. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my fucking God, folks. They, they didn't have anything to back it up? No, that's just, just a comment? Well, it's because he's of the night, you see. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> it's just... That's just the, the, this is, oh, come on, this is such a shit post right here. Yeah, I, I told you like four times that shit posts were real. <laughs> Are you going to give Preston the same one? Yes. Please don't talk to him about these. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's the Gerald Dane one. <laughs> what? What? That doesn't make any sense. Dark Star yeah, is the fucking great he, other? He's of the night. Well, that was fun and strangely insightful. Here are the final scores. In last place, with a participation trophy worthy four points, is Preston Jacobs. Did so poorly. Oh, well. No, it's fantastic. Thanks for doing so poorly. It'll make make for great content. <laughs> Looks like this time he was wrong about two thirds of it. Yeah! In third place, edging out last with a single point is Voldia, a respectable performance. And in second place, with six Glidus bucks, is my arch frenemy Alt Swift X. Which means, in first place, to literally everybody's surprise, is Carmine. With the bonus point for getting the trick question right, kinda, he clears second place by two whole points. Congratulations, Carmine. Your breastplate stretcher is in the mail. Post your results in the comments, too. Well done to anyone who beat certified theorist Gigabrain Carmine. And if you did poorly, don't worry. So did Preston Jacobs. Thanks for watching. Your regularly scheduled program will resume once I feel like it. There are buttons you can press to demonstrate your deep affection towards me and my videos, and there are links you can pursue to each of our contestants' relevant social accounts in the descripty place. Thanks to my four contestants, and to Ben and Alex for helping with the questions, and to Galactic Archive, who was supposed to be a contestant, but the recording fucked up. But hey, the video's long enough anyway. Thanks to my patrons, who I'll now put the names of on screen. I'll be posting some exclusive excerpts of my conversations with the contestants on my Patreon page because I feel like they deserve some extra scraps of content around now. Alright, you've got to tell me now, why did someone think that Oberon was trying to kill Marjorie? Because he's from Dawn and she's from the Reach. Oh my god. <laughs> So sometimes there are people who come up with a Song of Ice and Fire theories who clearly haven't read a Song of Ice and Fire.
And I'm like, more power to you. I respect the confidence. I, it's, like, it's like walking into a party and just accusing the host of poisoning the punch, not knowing anyone in the room. It's, I, I don't know. It's just, I, just the, the, the tone deafness of walking. Like, I don't know. I love the it. The balls required. The, the pendulous mastodonic balls of just... Mastodonic. Wilding out with a theory like that.